I'm Thomas Fullenweider. I uh, went to Colfax High School and got my electrical engineering degree at uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. And now I'm an in electrical engineer here at Schilling Robotics. Uh, well, I first started building underwater robots in high school as a senior in Mr. Schwartz's uh, engineering design class to test out ideas. So they, the engineer is used to use production tools and production area to do tests. And what they found was um, engineers got in production way, in the production way, and also um, the engineers didn't have as much freedom as they needed to actually test out the concept. So they built a separate shop just for uh, engineers um, and, and then we can use that to, to do all the tests that we need. So we can go in there and just build whatever we need for a test. And uh, it's a very good asset. We've got a, a 3D printer, we've got a mill, a lathe, a welder. Uh, what else do we have? We have a laser cutter uh, across the way. So do you guys have a 3D printer, laser cutter? Yeah, okay, I thought you, I thought you did, yeah. So so th this lab is really just a prototyping lab yeah. to build prototypes, maybe even early on in the in the first design phases, yeah. just to see if it'll even work. Yep. Well, how much time do you spend in there, or how much time does an engineer spend in there? An engineer, depending on the week, um, I mean, you'll you'll spend ten hours in there. Oh, a lot of time. Yeah, a lot. A lot of time. Of, so it's actually a mix between engineering and tinkering, really, like the yes. early phases. Yeah. A lot. Um, if, if we were to go in there, you'll find that there's quite a few models just made out of plywood. Uh, so we'll, we'll mock something up out of plywood and then actually cut it out of titanium or aluminum uh, after we're confident that it'll fit together. And test it out, and they run through um, a test that they call a FAT, and that's the factory acceptance test. And what that is, is the customer who's going to buy whatever assembly we've built comes in and usually for something like three days, they'll test their assembly and then they can decide if we need to fix something or uh, if it's totally acceptable for them. So this is the end of the production line and then over here, you can see the overhead white rails this is the main ROV assembly line. So this is our control console, and then we have our control uh, computing rack there as well. And this fits in the end of a C-van. It's like the, the vans that you see on the container ships. They're just a standard box. And this fits in the end of it, and the co-pilot and pilot sit here. And this is our most popular arm. It's one of the most dexterous arms. So this is one that's controlled by that master controller that you saw, the, the little black uh, surrogate arm. That's what controls this. So we can't compress all the cavities because there's oil inside. So uh, if we didn't have that in there, the pressure of the ocean would just crush our assemblies and let water in to all of our electronics. The thing about shilling is it's focused on prototyping. And uh, I think Mr. Schwartz would support that in his teaching style as well. Um, basically, you want to find out as much as you can, as soon as you can, if ever you have a concept. So you do that by prototyping. Something that uh, the president always draws for us, Tyler, uh, is it's a graph. And on one side, it's concept and on one side it's execution. So if you have an idea, um, you, you have some idea of an, a, a concept, and it's either a very bad concept or a very good concept. And then as you progress in a project, then uh, your execution is either very poor or very good. And what prototyping does is you can try out an idea very soon to try and get an idea of how good of a concept it actually is. Because everybody, when they have an idea, they have this, I this idea that it's the best concept out there. But once they start executing it, they realize you're actually down here on the concept graph rather than up, up high. So uh, prototyping is all about getting early discovery on the quality of your concept. So. Um, 
fortunately, we, fortunately, we uh, have a great focus on that here, um, and the engineers are free to test out uh, different concepts. So, there's a tendency to want to hire people who are more hands-on. People are generally very impressed when they come here, uh, like uh, corporate people are very impressed when they come here that you know they see us working on something over here and they're like, oh, what is the technician doing? And I'm like, no, that, that's an engineer over there. And we're working alongside the technicians. There's a lot of schools that are very prestigious and very good at um, teaching book smarts and the theory and everything, but what you'll find is a lot of times out in the workplace, people don't need theory, they need you to do the job. They need you to actually get your hands dirty. So um, with Cal Poly, it was learn by doing. So every engineering class that we had was accompanied with a, a lab where we actually um, executed the things we were learning in class. So that kind of hands-on training and hands-on learning uh, made it actually much easier to get a job after high school because people saw my background and uh, they would ask me, oh, can you do this in the lab? And sometimes they would actually bring in lab equipment and ask me to do something on it during an interview. And I could do it just fine. They're like, wow, some kids can't do that at all. Here we are, UC Davis Quad, just about to have lunch.